Good morning, Monday, April 27th. Uh, been a long time in this. St stuck in our homes, uh, self-quarantine. Uh, our hair gives evidence of that, doesn't it? When Revelation chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 7 through 10. So to the church of Philadelphia. It says, to, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on earth. Interesting here. This is the only church in Revelation of the seven churches where Everything that he says to them is positive and doesn't say, but I help, but I hold this against you. Um, everything is positive, all good things to say. And why? Why, you ask? Well, um, it seems like this is the church that God is using to bring unbelievers into the church. Uh, I will make them come and fall at your feet and acknowledge me. It's like... A church that, even though it's 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 it's, it's it says, I know that you have little strength, but you have kept my word, not denied. Even though it's it doesn't sound like it's a big church, it just sounds like just it's just, just a smaller church. It's not it's not doesn't have great strength, but God is using this church to reach the lost. Wow. What would that church look like? Uh, but the, the interesting is, is verse 10 here where it says, Since you have kept my command to impatiently, I will keep you from the hour of trial that's going to come upon the world. Now, it just seems like he's talking about the end of the world, the trial at the end of the world. Um, and, and I'm not going to dispute that it's not, but it's, but, but it's relevant, okay? It's, it's relevant uh, scripture tells us that God created the world in seven days, but is seven to be taken literally? Like he, it was just a, month, a Sunday, a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, uh, that it, that He created the world, and, and uh, of course not. It says here in in second in Second Peter three eight, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. So we could easily be in the tribulation in the end of the world because for all we know, this could take, the, the, the end could take hundreds of, of years. So this whole coronavirus, it is possible that this coronavirus that we're going through is a part of the tribulation. And God is promising that, that this church, that because you are faithful to me, even though you're not mighty, and because you reach the laws, I'm going to protect you going to keep you from going through the, uh, the, 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 the the trial. Now, I'm not real positive on all this. I'm, I'm not sitting there and being dogmatic about it. But I do know that when, when it talks about uh, a tribulation, uh, seven years, uh, is that to be taken literally seven years? Well, it'd be like saying creation took just seven years. And it's obvious that it didn't take seven years. Uh, it, it's obvious that it took millions, millions of years, creation. So this coronavirus could easily be a part, but whether whether it's the actual or, or not, uh, it's 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 the fact that God is protecting certain churches, certain people, and people make up the church. Uh, so I was going to take a look here a little bit at, at collision, whether collision would fit in with this, because most of you watching this are are from collision. Uh, so I, I saw Tress on there early, Becky, Veronica, Alicia, Serena. Uh, we're, we're, our church kind of fits in with this. We're, we're a small church, 
we don't have a whole lot of strength. Uh, good morning, Paul. Just watched your video, worship video. Uh, and God is using us to bring unbelievers to uh, to the to the, to Him. Uh, listen to this. I, I I spent a lot of time. <laughs> I spent a lot of time going over my notes for the ten years because this kind of interests me. And so I went over it. And gosh, uh, approximately fifty to sixty percent of the people that's that that have come to collision over the years made first-time commitments to the Lord. 50 to 60%. Uh, listen, as Klishen has said, I count it because every time someone makes a commitment to the Lord, like I, I do this, j just so you can see, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna show you this, what I do. And since we've started Collision, since we've started Collision, I have this book here of every Sunday and what the title was of, of the message and anything that happened, if there was baptism, if there was commitments, if there were recommitments, I've kept an inventory of all of that since since day one, since since February 21, 2010, when we uh, when we started meeting in uh, at Palms Park, 2010, ten years ago, over ten years ago, and I have every every statistic that that's there. So listen to this. Collision had 166 people make first-time commitments to the Lord in our 10 years. 166, that's an average of almost 17 people per year that have made first-time commitments. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's exciting to me. That's exciting to me that God has used our little church to reach that many people. And even if they're not still a part of Collision, it's, that's irrelevant. It's the fact that that they made a commitment to the Lord because if you were part of my message Sunday, it's like you can't lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. Here or not saying one of my one of the messages that I gave uh, uh, was that you cannot lose your salvation. So those 166 people and I and I don't have in here the ones that made commitments from the youth groups. This is just on Sundays. So that number is higher when we take in the consideration the youth group because many of your children gave their lives to the Lord in the youth group. Alicia, I, I can still remember the day that Sammy made her first time commitment to the Lord. I remember where she was sitting. I remember with her, her standing uh, when she did it. So there's actually been more. But I want to share a story with you uh, here. And many of you have heard it before, but but it's it really touches um, it, scripture talks about levels in heaven. Jesus said, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And it seems like there's levels that talks about building up treasures in heaven, etc. So I was thinking, you know, like when we get to heaven and, and, and I'm going to be satisfied just getting through the gate. Even if I get a little hot, I don't care. Uh, but there's going to be mansions probably in heaven. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, when you look at them, who's going to get the higher levels? And, and, and my mind goes back to works, and it's going to be like Mother Teresa, who was a servant all of her life and worked with the poor. I'm, I'm thinking of all those people. And then I was sitting there thinking, and this actually happened to me one night, laying in bed, uh, that when I get to heaven, I'm going to follow Jesus around for like 100 years, just following him around, asking him question after question after question and listening to his answers. So I got a lot of questions, uh, and then uh, and then I'm gonna ask Jesus. I'm gonna say, Jesus, where's my dad? And Jesus is gonna say, Well, what do you want to see him for? And I'm gonna say, Because he was instrumental in my being becoming a Christian. I, I'd like to see him. And it dawned on me. It dawned on me that this is the this is what determines the levels in heaven. How many people are asking for you when they get to heaven? How many people are asking for you? Uh, Jesus, have you seen Mary Zort? Jesus, have you seen Paul Gandara? Jesus, have you seen Serena McFarlane? Jesus, have you seen Jim Plant? Why? because they were instrumental in my becoming a Christian, and that's why I'm here today. Wow. 
and, and, and could and could it be where people are saying, where are the people from Collision Church? Jesus, where's the people from Collision Church? Why do you want to see them? Because it was their church that led me to the Lord. It was Collision Church that led me to the Lord. And, and maybe that's why here in Revelation, when Jesus, because all the other churches, he, he gives a little bit about what he's satisfied with and then a whole bunch of what he holds against them. And here's this church in Philadelphia where there's a whole bunch of what he is good about them and nothing, nothing that he holds against them. Oh, could that be your church? Could your church be that? Because I think what determines the church is the, one, the fact that God is using that church to reach the lost. He has certainly used Collision Church to reach the lost, and when he uses the church, he uses the people in the church. I didn't bring those people in. I didn't bring in the people that I brought some in, but I didn't bring. You brought them in. You brought them in to the church, and as a result of hearing God's word, they made a first-time commitment to the Lord. Something to think about. Who is going to ask you? Who's going to ask Jesus, have they seen you? Something to think about. Have a great day.